Hey what's up guys, it's Oakley and I am here playing as the Dwarves. It's going to be a 2v2, I have my ally guarding my left flank, that's going to be an Empire Army. He's got two steam tanks pulling up, uh, three great swords, two gunners, Call France, and um, yeah, kind of a small build for the Empire. He's got the hand gunners, he's got um, a Celestial Wizard, so a small elite build, which I've been seeing a lot of online. So my force is deployed on the right and I've brought a lot of Dwarven infantry going no ranged units because we're going against two green skin armies. I figured I would just kind of put more um, meat grinder into it. I want more sustain. And so not bringing ranged units or gyrocopters or artillery um, could be a bad thing. But at the same time I figured I'd get swarm with the green skins and my uh, range units will get tied up almost immediately. So I figured it would be more worthwhile to bring more infantry. My opponents are actually going to be uh, Pixelated Apollo, who's facing off against me, and Heir of Carthage. Let's slow-mo this down real quick, just so we can see Pixie's build. So Pixie's brought a Black Orc core, and that's going to be charging up through the front. Back to that up with three uh, uh, of the Error Boys. He's got a Giant. He has uh, Azag the uh, Slaughter moving behind. I do want to look at this character model. <laughs> oh my god, look at him just charging forward. Just a brutal orc war boss. Uh, and then he also has three of these orc boar boy big ones. So I actually really like this build. The black orcs are as quality troops as you can imagine. Very good for getting into the meat grinder. Not susceptible um, to having too much damage from artillery and flames. And they just get in the thick of it. The air boys shoot very quickly. Azag to cast direct damage, giant to tie some units up, and the orc board begins to deal a lot of extra damage. So this is a pretty potent build. Um, <laughs> Air, on the other hand, has decided to bring just a total uh, meat grinder of a force. He's got Grimgore, and then basically all black orcs, some of them vetted up, and then he has as well an Arachnorok spider. So my ally is trying to kite a bit with his hand gunners to move up here, trying to target these black orcs, but he's gonna get just absolutely thrashed. He's trying to get some volleys off, but look, look how thin his line is. He's got nothing to meet this. The spider's gonna crash against one of his great swords, and then all of these uh, units are gonna come into the mix. So this is not looking good already for my ally. He really needs to throw something forward to tie those guys up to get more shots off. Looks like he does have a whole bunch of heroes, like Empire Captain. Meanwhile, on my flank, what have I decided to do? Well, I brought forward my um, hero here, my Thane. Or, sorry, this is my runesmith. Or is this my Thane? So, yeah, so anyways, he's pouring forward, casting a bunch of um, buffs on my units. So, I have my runesmiths here, tanking it out with the giant. I did a direct damage spell, and I have dwarf warriors in the mix. And then what you see me doing is shuffling a lot of my guys to the back. I'm slowing this down just so we can appreciate kind of what I'm doing strategically. So as the dwarves, what I found is really good is using the explosive charges. Dwarves stand strong for a long time. So what you want to do is force your opponent to clump up with your high value targets. So that's why I have, you know, just a couple units out here trying to tie down the giant. Then behind these, I have the troll hammer torpedoes getting launched right at the giant's face. So a little bit of slow motion here, and we'll get back to normal speed. Just watching these fly is very, very cool. So already, this giant's health is dropping. Now, I did um, kind of get my hero too close. And so what you see um, Pixelated Apollo doing, which is really smart, is he's just running up forward with Azeg the Slaughter, and he's just casting direct damage. And he's going to be doing this the entire game, just picking at my lord. So this is one of the problems I have um, with direct damage spells, is it makes your heroes, like the dwarf heroes, just melt away super quick. So Spirit Leech is causing a lot of damage. I should pull him out of combat, uh, but Pixelated Apollo is closing on me very quickly. Let's put this on play. So I'm trying to get in here to, to buff more spells uh, to keep my guys going, and then I pull him out. So I did take a fair amount of damage. And look at this, he's dealing up more direct damage against my guys. So I've got his forces tied down, buffing my heroes. On the right side, I charge with Dwarf Warriors with great weapons because they do uh, good against large units like this on the charge. So I'm beating back his Orc War Boy Biggins. I have my Satchel Charges, and you can see how the, uh, the rest of the Biggins are kind of circling around. Let's 
let's put this back on slow motion. So what I've done is I've tanked out in the front with my heroes. The giant is now done. He's committed all of his black orcs on these massive blobs against great weapons. And meanwhile, look what I have in the back. I have long beards coming in close to give morale buffs. I have iron breakers to get shots off. I have miners with blast charges just to throw everything, do as much damage to this blob as possible. My runesmith is in here popping rune of negation, uh, rune of oath and steel for more armor, more damage resistance, so everything to have the dwarfs be tanked out even further. Now the error boys in the back are going to be focusing fire on my iron drakes, which is a good choice for them, but I have taken out the high value targets. On this side, we're going to be able to watch this huge charge up and down the lines of the black orcs just crashing into this force. So like I said, the Empire forces just did not have enough uh, to deal with this. And look, one of the um, wizards has been caught out in the open. So Air's rush build is doing him very, very well. The um, Empire lines are just completely surrounded. I'm going to try and throw some forces in. Because I've clumped up so many of the enemy forces, what I have is a spare couple guys. So I'm peeling away some dwarf warriors to get into the rear. He has broken some of the black orcs though. Gunners are free firing to the flank. Um, the steam tank also coming in here. So what I'm have, hoping to do is try and even the odds up on this side. So this should be uh, enough for us to start winning on one flank. And we're cleaning this up pretty decisively on one flank. I'm going to go after, I believe, the Ares hero. Oh no, I'm going around Grimgore just to try and get some more penalties in the rear. And he gets shot up by the tank. So I'm helping my ally. Meanwhile, I'm getting swarmed. He did break through my front rank. Dwarf warriors are still holding strong. He gets through to my second rank where I have my hero which has been consistently targeted by Azag the Slaughter. Uh, I'm not sure where he's gone, but now I'm going to commit more forces, Longbeards with great weapons. The Giant came back, but I have my Iron Breakers. They were firing away into the flank, and now I'm getting hit with all kinds of spells, Soul Blight, minus armor and all that, but I do bring her down, bring her down, bring her down, destroy that guy. And I'm breaking his Orc Boar Boys. He did get into the rear with a couple of them, so I'm going to be trying to flame these boar boys. I'm not going to be doing much. Uh, flame against the armor just doesn't do what it needs to. You really need gunners, so that's where the lack of gunners is not doing well for me. But at the same time, I have infantry instead, and the sustained capacity that I have here is very beneficial. So as like the slaughter has been doing lots of damage to my runesmith, to my hero. He's desperately trying to take them out. Now he's, uh, he's in combat. So I should be able to win, but look how low my health has gotten. This is not looking too good for me. I'm bringing in my longbeards with great weapons to try and stem the, the losses in the center. And the great weapons are always going to be a good choice to tie down the enemy force. Uh, especially against units with huge armor. So I'm starting to get some losses. There was some wavering. I've come back. I've brought back my dwarf warriors. who are over here trying to pummel, pummel the enemy. So I think I've evened up this fight pretty decently. Air has a couple units um, that are coming back from routing, and Grimgore is getting tossed around by the steam tank, just knocked back. Gunners are back to secure my rear, and now I can recommit my runesmith. I am breaking this force, and now I have Azag all to my own. And he's trying to pull out of combat here. So my runesmith is desperately trying to get into the center, and what you're going to see, he's a sports specialist. So I'm giving him a move order to get to the center so he can buff my units around here. Boom, there you go. So what this does, rune of oaths and steel, rune of negation, so more armor, more damage resistance. And this is quickly going to turn the tide of battle in my favor. Then he's going to charge in against these black orcs, just deal tremendous amounts of damage to them. There is the constant threat of the boar boys getting to the my rear. I turn about just at the last minute with my iron breakers who have charged events against any units. And so yes, they're going to get knocked down, but they are going to now start to get in a lot of kills. So my clump here is starting to rout from the, re the rear of the dwarf warriors, but the iron breakers are not going to be breaking anytime soon. Meanwhile, I have miners with blasting charges going after... Um, the Black Orcs, and what's happening here is a little bit of comedy. So you have uh, Pixelate Apollo with Azag the Slaughter who's detached from the battle, and what he's doing is he's chasing after my Thane. My Thane decided to get out of combat. I can't let him lose because my morale is on a razor's edge. 
and Azog is coming after here waiting to cast a direct damage spell against him, waiting to finish him off, and so I'm trying to pull out of combat. I'm going to try and tie down Azog a little bit, <laughs> he is not happy about that, just to get my hero out of the way. Back in the center, I'm casting spells, or no, Air of Carthage is casting spells, sorry, and he's going to be able to, I believe, take out this steam tank. Just beating, wailing against it, and if he does get... Oh, one more, one more push, one more push, and he could send him running. He really needs to bring Carl into this fight before the steam tank goes down, and there he goes. Boom. <laughs> Knocked away. Uh, so I feel that ability is kind of overpowered for the steam tank. Um, so now it's going to be turning the tide a little bit more in our favor. I think my help early on was good, but now oh, Grimgore is coming back, and he's going to finish off this steam tank. Just one solid hit, and it's going to go down. Boom. So Grimgore is doing work. And the Arachnorok Spider is still alive on that flank, which is not good for us. We really need Carl Franz to be taking out those high-value targets. Meanwhile, on this side, I've kind of routed the enemy center, which is good. Keeping my Thane alive was very important, so you see he got out of there with almost zero health. Uh, Pixel Apollo did cast a direct damage spell on him, but I got out there just in the nick of time. He is going to cast the rest of... Oh, no, I'm casting uh, support on my units, trying to rally them. But what's the problem now is he has these Air Boys still alive. And the dwarves at this point have nothing to catch up with the arrow boys. And the arrow boys fire very quick. He has more of them than I can catch up with. And so despite the armor and enthusiasm of my dwarves, he's just going to be able to gun me down. And the boar boys and Azak combined, not going to be looking good for me. So I'm desperately trying to pull out of here, but I... Uh, my units end up breaking, so what I decide to do is I need to fall back with everything. Azag is coming back for my lord, so I'm going to try and um, turn about, try and perhaps save this army, deal with the rest of these black orcs, save my ally, and it looks like they're wavering, so I think I could do something, and then all of a sudden the morale starts to break, shatter, and it's just kind of uh, annoying how the morale will all of a sudden crumble as quickly as it does. I think there was a fair shot that this battle could have gone on for a while longer, um, but still, fun fight. Hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, I am still having trouble with the dwarves dealing with direct damage spells. Not much you can do to counter that besides perhaps trying to tie down enemy spellcasts or having gyrocopters to harass them. But these uh, greenskin rushes, same with the vampire counts with the leech life and stuff like that, very very hard to deal with. And I think we could have done better had my ally brought a couple more great swords. I think the gunners were not at all beneficial. He really needed more um, stuff to deal with the black orc spam, which I definitely had. Um, but Inversely, I maybe could have sacrificed one or two units for gunners, which would have helped me deal with perhaps heroes or the boar boys, which were dealing a lot of death to me. So, definitely lessons learned, but nonetheless a very fun battle. Well played to Pixel Apollo and uh, Air of Carthage. Hope you guys uh, will be casting these. It was a fun battle, and I really enjoyed it. Let's end the replay and take a look at some of the um, final results here. So, look at the dwarves bringing tons and tons of units. Overall, getting a fair amount of kills with Iron Breakers, Longbeards getting a lot of kills, Dwarf Warriors with great weapons getting lots of kills, and yeah, overall pretty good. Troll Hammer, uh, Torpedoes just sinking that giant before it could get much damage done. The Iron Drake here, perhaps a costly investment that I should have better invested in Gunners. I think two Gunners as opposed to the Iron Drakes. It's really, uh, it's, it's hard to tell. Because the Iron Drakes are really good against unarmored targets, and so I figured Pixelated Apollo would have been bringing more of a balanced force. But with this super tanky Black Orc um, build, it means that the Iron Drakes are kind of negated, especially against the Orc Boar Boy, Boar Boy Biggins, which are fast, get out of my range, and close super quick. The um, Iron Drakes just didn't end up paying for themselves, and I think that was the fatal flaw of my army. Switch this out for two gunners, and it would have done much, much better. Uh, derps here. Just not, uh, I guess he did okay for the great swords. Steam tanks just not really doing too much damage. The gunners actually getting a fair amount of kills. Surprised to see that. Um, and the celestial wizard I think was the waste. So probably tossing that guy for, I think he needed more halberds to hold that charge. And a halberd and spear spam I think works really well. And two steam tanks is too much. I think trading one of those out for just more infantry to surround the enemy and really deal with that was necessary. Pixel Apollo doing well, Orc Error Boys doing very well, um, Black Orcs doing admirably, and Air brought all Black Orcs. So those guys did okay, though not as well as you would have expected. So I think Pixel Apollo kind of carried the day in this battle. 
And uh, yeah, well played. The direct damage spell definitely was my undoing as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. See you in the next one. Peace out.